Yes, I think we all look back fondly on those three years when the series The Vicar's Wife Mysteries were being filmed in Matlock Bath. There in the brooding northern Peak District of England, we were part of something larger than ourselves, and who wouldn't miss that? Certainly not George James, the acclaimed mystery writer, Margaret Worthington, the producer, Edgar Smithson, the publisher, Janet Gale, the expert in historical restoration, Delilah Murchison, the clergyman's widow, and Minnie Morrison, the costumier, and myself, Amelia Winterhaven, play the part of the dynamic assistant to the brilliant Vicar's wife. Three years on, you must believe that idyllic childhood behind and grow up. Some of us have done a better job of it than others because there is likely to be danger clinging to the world. <laughs> or tries to restore it to something you never really want. <clears throat> Could our future be better if we give up on our ideals? What happens to us if we don't even try? Well, that you will each just have to decide for yourselves. <clears throat> dancing and telling body jokes over the graves of our dreams. I don't like to worry about Margaret. She is on one of the slippery slopes my friend Neville confronted Moskeen in the Sahara. If not for some kindly burbers, he would be plodded still face down in the sand. Uh, here I've been in love with Edgar since, well, since we were almost still in nappies, and he doesn't have the slightest clue. The don't. She is rather good at her work succeeding in a man's world, but her underwear she totters precariously on the brink of perpetual spinster. Rather brilliant in his way, but when it comes to the heart, he is as clueless as a Brit trying to communicate in a Parisian street market. I keep introducing her to blokes who would be perfect for her, but it makes her absolutely furious with men. He shall only end up with some rinds of stinky blue cheese and stale baguettes to break his by customers. <laughs> And it serves him right, because he deserves it. And I don't deserve it. Why? Just for wanting her to be happy? No, I shall not be glad. <laughs> I not be glad. I just want him to realize that there is an old-fashioned market in the green. A feast of wonders right in front of him. And he could enjoy it. <laughs> if he only opened up his bloody bloodshot eyes. Margaret, come here. Edgar! Edgar, now what was so important that I had to dress right over to this Fortnum and Mason's in Potter's Bar? Rather far from Chelsea. You yeah, just wanted to see you away from pride eyes. Missing me? Uh, always. How are things at the Ministry of Culture? Oh, the usual. I want to do projects that have something to say. They want me to do a series on the oldest tree in Ipswich. <laughs> the Baobab in spring, the Baobab in summer, which I have nothing against exactly, but... Uh, and with Kenneth Branagh as the voice of the tree. Oh, uh, not like the good old days <laughs> of the vicar's wife, eh? <laughs> you should get into publishing. You wouldn't believe how much we made from that coffee table book of poems you read to your cat. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the BBC would be interested. Like they were when you pitched that unknown writer, George James. Who hasn't heard of him now? Listen, I have two tickets to that new opera about the life of Verdi. Oh, yes, see, si, signorina, I've heard it's very good. Is that stupendo? Mega, mega, bestio. I'm sure that um, Reggie from accounting would love to join. 
enjoy it. His divorce just went through the poor boy. He adores that air and could use a good night out. Oh, yes, I'm sure he could. Never mind. What did you want to tell me? Well, it's about Amelia. You know Amelia. Well, of course I do. Do you remember how upset Clarissa Martin was? So, when people said that Amelia was the real star of the vicar's wife. <laughs> and I do believe that Clarissa has done her best to dampen Amelia's work ever since. What? From the other grave? The influence of some stretch is rather far. Mm. Yes, well, perhaps why Amelia ran off to America to be in that soap opera. What was it called? Uh, Twilight of Joy? Though I'm not sure if she played Twilight or Joy. Anyway, she's back now, and she was at the Spaniards Inn the other night. Who was she? No, larger than mine. I was playing a smashing game of darts. My ears had eaten serving me well. Uh, people were talking nonsense, uh, as people do, down in pint after pint, and suddenly I heard a familiar voice. I glanced over, and there she was. And really, it was remarkable. Really, it was amazing. And she was saying, but I think she should never have said it in a million years. And I just sat there with my mouth, hanging open. And she was never going to stop, never going to take a breath. And finally, I said to her, my dear, you'd expect that we, that any of us in our former cherished circle, let alone that any one besides me, their cultures or decorum would really. And then it all became extraordinary insulting. She just laughed, and someone else gave up, and we went on to something else. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just amazed, that's all. <laughs> yes, but I should have, so was I. Now, if it was so upsetting, why didn't you object?
and I don't want you to be the slightest disturbed. Disturbed? No. Intrigued, yes. Especially by the misery of others. Now, maybe this will certainly not involve someone else. Well, I can't see what it would have to do with me. I suppose no one would. Really. I mean, right. What could it possibly have to do with you? But you must have told Margaret. Oh, what an eye to Caesar or Caesar to me. It's not like we're living a clandestine life of matrimony. You know, the very noses of our friends. <laughs> no, I didn't suppose you were. <laughs> you and Caesar. No, I mean, me and Margaret. Uh, and she's a first rate producer, but as a wife, I am completely gobsmacked. Yes, I suppose you would be as a wife. <laughs> but she were most married once, weren't you? I don't recall the whole story. After all, the historic house renovation, I don't go beyond the 10th century. Oh, is that so? And what did you learn from that doomsday book, that rare illuminated manuscript of the love life of Edgar? Well. I must say, not a very large tome and not very illuminating either. But, reading between the lines, only that you broke it off. We made a solemn and mutual agreement not to love each other for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's not my fault that the dear lady was jealous of Margaret. Oh yes, how odd. Uh, what series she produced on the grape light in the Napa Valley? A real edge of your seat, nail biter. Will the next vintage have a famous bouquet, or will it succumb to lingering and fungal disintegration? Uh, a good bouquet is nothing to sniff at. My bosses would like to work, need to work with her again. Oh, if only I could find another George James lurking in the woodwork. Perhaps you're looking in the wrong houses. I uh, would see that exactly. <laughs> oh. She's a complete control freak. Don't even monopolize your time. <laughs> <laughs> right then, what will you be doing on Wednesday at 2.17? Well, I'm supposed to be with Margaret, but... You could be sick in bed instead. I don't want to be sick in bed, thank you very much. No, I don't mean be sick, I mean, you know. You know. Sick in bed. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Yes, I suppose I could do that. <laughs> 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 not really my style. No, I suppose it's not. Although, you are looking a bit peckish. Why? Goodness, perhaps I had been overdoing it. No, I'm not. No, just, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> oh! Oh, well, I see. Thanks, then. Actually, I'm going to see you look better. Quite a flush in your face. Yes, sir. Perhaps I could wear a different shirt. No, no, it's quite becoming, but I'm sorry, I must be getting on. I need to meet with the Minister of Interiors in half hour. Minister of Interiors? Have you moved into the government like Margaret then, too? Eh, uh, not exactly, no. My boss at the Blackheath Emporium at Historical Renovation, that's what I call him. He likes it better than Dr. Y, the time travelling interior designer. Though I do think it's a serious appeal, yet. Mm, you may be right. God bless, my dear. Shall we meet at three at corner of the Masons on High Street, Hampstead? You can tell me what you decided to do and uh, how it all worked out. May I? Might be able to make it. Unless I'm <coughs> sick in bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps I should attend you at home then. Make sure your wallpaper isn't clashing with your wainscoting. <laughs> a common problem, nothing to be ashamed of. Really? <laughs> My wainscoting is just fine, thank you very much. Are you sure? Sometimes it takes a delicate and slight adjustment from a strong eye and a steady hand. Or perhaps you have dry rotten wattle. Or a misaligned lintel. I know a good doorman who could take care of it for you. Yes, I have no doubt. But as much as I would love a private consultation on my interior design, at best you do leave now, or you will be waiting late for your next appointment. Good day, fine sir. Edgar! George! You, you just missed Janet. Did I? Really? What a shame. Yes, it is. I didn't expect to see you here either. Don't you usually take your tea on Oxford Street? Yes, well, I'm afraid lately they've not had the water to the right temperature. Don't say. Shocking. I mean, you wouldn't think. 
Then you wouldn't. <laughs> How is your <laughs> Oh, well, Edgar, you know me. I am doing research. You know, planning things out. You know, weighing the machinations of the plot against the important themes of our times. Ah, yes. In other words, you've not written yet written a word. Not a syllable. <sighs> anyway, what does it matter to you? You don't have me under contract anymore, except for the residuals for the vicar's wife. Yeah, well, that was by your choice, old boy. And that is why I am glad that I ran into you today. You see, I'm afraid that my new series has been turned down by Acorn for filming. Was it? I'm very sorry to hear that. Are you? Are you very sorry? I think I might need you, Edgar. <coughs> I mean, really need you. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> you once believed in me. <laughs> yes, I did. I just simply don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know, I have a wonderful scenario. I heard a bit about it. A female detective who used to be a circus acrobat. Yes, and she solves crimes by hovering above the action, as it were. Oh, where is it set? Oh, mostly in Northumbria. Oh, Again, people identify that girl with the figures. Why, I'm not sure they want some upstart acrobat woman in her dear and recently departed territory. Do you really think so? Oh, yes, now if you were to set it in uh, uh, Brighton with uh, flashbacks to her ancestors in the Hippodrome, or better yet, to make it in Wadian with her being from Brighton, have the best in both worlds. Not bad. You see, this is why I need you, Edgar. Most agents, they won't give me the time of day. But you have a spare idea up your sleeves, and you are not afraid to share it. Well, I'm not a right old boy, so what does it matter? I would come back to you in a heartbeat if you would have me. <laughs> George. Edgar. I wouldn't want to risk a fight with your new publisher. I can't afford it. No. I know. It breaks my heart, though. Really, quite in twain. Yes, well, I have no doubt you will recover. Just try pitching the idea and see what happens. You know what? I think I just might. Thank you, Edgar. And if the new old boy is a delicate time for you, you should just uh, check with Margaret. And tell my secretary, the next time you want to see me, she shall just make an appointment and not succumb to your charms. <laughs> yes, well, uh, she is rather a sweet girl, but I'm afraid that she is not quite my type. Adieu, Edgar. So long, John. <sighs> Really, Josh? Really? You want me to have a baby, even though you won't marry me? 
And you want me to name him or her after you so the poor child never forgets you? Yes, I know. You wouldn't make a very good father. We both know that. But I love you! And I want you by my side all day. And your child will too. No matter how much he or she may eventually grow to despise you in the long run. So please, Josh, say you'll marry me. After all, Darling, how are things with you and uh, Margaret? No new developments? No uh, tall, dark strangers entering her life? Or uh, short, handsome ones for that matter? Not the sort of I know. Why is there someone she's particularly fond of? Oh, Edgar. The secrets of the heart are best revealed to those involved. Such a terrible shame when two boats Passing in the night are like strangers on a train not meant to meet at the dusty crossroads of their lives. <laughs> Don't you agree? <laughs> yes, I think I might. But I am very glad you could make it today after all. Especially when you were so under the weather. Just yesterday. Who told you that? Jennifer Emma told me last night. Remember asking you to keep you informed? Oh, Janet never misses an opportunity to be helpful. She mentioned you had a touch of malaise and wouldn't want to meet with me. Yes, well, people of my clan tend to make a quick recovery when either, but maybe there is something you need to know and I can't wait any longer. You really didn't tell Janet or George. No, I'm afraid I didn't. I just couldn't somehow. I couldn't. Then you didn't tell Margaret either? Why? Why would I tell her if I didn't tell the others? I must say, I'm grateful for the honor, whatever it is you're talking about, that you haven't talked about to anyone else you've been talking to. Yet. Yeah, you <laughs> may not be so grateful as I share this little tidbit I happen to over here, but I would be totally remiss if I didn't at least make the bear bear. No worries, mate. I am a, uh, costumier. I can fill out the figure. Oh, despair it might be. Even if it were very much about you? Then I would say I highly doubt it. But you know me. Yes, I'm afraid I do. But what could Amelia possibly know about my life? She's, she's been abroad. We were hardly ever close. Very well, then. As long as you promise not to pass it along. Not in a million years. No! Oh, that vixen! That, that, that shapeshifter! That truly awful girl! And you! Are you quite sure you did nothing to inspire this horrendous diatribe? I promise when I come to you otherwise. Oh, well, I suppose not. I mean, the ancient Greeks don't have to be the better of bad news. And all those gifts! Yeah, that too. Seems they like to mention their bad uh, But what will you go? I'm not sure at the moment. I have to think about it. You could always pretend I didn't say anything. Could I? Well, no. No, it is a nice thought. I need to tell George, don't I? You promised you wouldn't tell anyone. But if you really must. Yes, I'd rather think I must! <laughs> and wide-ranging slander must be exposed like a bad penny to wither in the light of the day. I wish I was so certain of that. Isn't that why you told me in the first place? Madam, I don't know what you mean. Sir, I'm sure that you do. You could have mentioned it to George yourself. That's much better coming from you. Poor boy doesn't like me much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, he did mention he wants to pick my brain about a boy Costumes of all things. Some extraordinary imagination the bloke has. Yes, we're scheduled to meet tomorrow at Fort the Reasons. Are you grand in Camden Town? No, Kensington, actually. Uh, all the better one in Camden Town seems to be a bit dodgy. Seems there's an American old staff who's been adding the tea before the bringing Oh no, the cat, <laughs> the charlatan of the art of infusion, how horrid. Uh, you could, I suppose, always tell George you are safe, they all. Darling, I don't like to beg. My great-great-grandfather 
father was an admiral, I'm not going to shy away from crossing the Rubicon when I could be putting my best foot forward on the bridge of life. Just, uh, not in my blood, I suppose. Or just have to do what we have to do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Bonsoir, dear heart. A bientôt, ma chérie. Four o'clock on the dot, she says. It's terribly important, she says. Where is that blasted woman? People think that just because I write mysteries that I can magically solve the puzzles of their personalities. As if I am a need help column in the Daily Herald. Human behavior is as mysterious to me as to everyone else, and that is why I keep trying to figure it out by creating characters who don't usually bother me by asking to meet the tea. Not that I have a bloody clue why an intelligent woman like Margaret pines for the likes of Edgar. True, he did have the good sense to publish my books, despite my private school education, but otherwise he profoundly lacks intuition. I must have made a half dozen passes at him during our first meeting, and he didn't even notice. Like throwing pebbles into a placid lake, and nearly a ripple arises to spread it towards the edges. Ah oh well, another mystery. Like poor old P.G. Woodhouse, who didn't realize until it was too late that that Nazi regime was using him for their propaganda. Still, banning him in his homeland did seem a bit much. The grandson of his character Jeeves figures prominently in my third vicar's wife mystery. Such a good book, if I do say so myself. It all starts one Sunday morning when the vicar suddenly discovers that someone has stolen his sermon, and his wife, Prunella, has a good idea of who it was. My dear Mr. James! My dear Miss Morrison! And how is your uh, Earl Grey? Oh, not bad, although the quality of the bergamot has been slipping as of late. Oh, yes, it is a your right. Not that I would ever say anything about it, mind you. I'm not one to go out of my way to cause others unhappiness just because I am unhappy. Oh, no, no, certainly not. Uh, the Lady Grey Diamond, the lavender infusion, if you don't mind. A little bit of almond milk, not soy, not oat, not cashew, almond, and a little of the, uh, a little of the lavender infused honey, if you wouldn't mind. I know my husband took me to the back, he's only taking me down for special occasions. Thank you so much. Off you trot. <laughs> you were saying. Yes, no, my dear Minnie, you are absolutely nothing in the slightest bit like Janet. <laughs> well, how is Janet these days? Well, you know me, I am not in the habit of going out of my way to speak ill towards another living soul. Especially if he may not be certain that they have a soul. Georgie! Sometimes you're frightfully extraordinary. So sure, so strong in your beliefs, the white cliffs could fall on you and you wouldn't budge a centimeter. Well, true, but in this life, one must take a stand for the things one believes in. Absolutely! You know, I am willing to see eye to eye with anyone who knows the difference between a hayfence and port wine. You of all people would know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. Well, then I would wager that you have talked with Ed. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> oh, God. Well, now, tell me, dear, what was so important that you needed me to put off my trip to the country a day just to talk with you? Well, George. Not to beat around the bush while seeking a needle in a haystack, but it has come to my attention that the unhappiness of another in our circle, with a bit on the outside, oh. on the periphery, oh. or I should say, only hanging on to the edge by sheer willpower and centripetal force. And it's all just such a shame, really. I thought it best not to keep it to myself. Really? Indeed, yes. I, what I have to do is I have to tell you. What I heard that someone else heard that someone else said that could have profound and dire consequences for our deepest held beliefs. 
profound and dire, really, as bad as all that? Possibly worse. Good gracious, what is this world coming to? Well, I wouldn't like to know myself, actually, mm. but since the good Lord tends not to stop round for tea to share in some enlightening and entirely benevolent banter, I doubt we will ever get a complete answer. Well, then tell me, darling. I mean, I have experienced so much in this life that nothing really could surprise me anymore. Oh, very well, then. It seems that the last outing is Amelia. I mean, you know Amelia. Yes, I'm afraid I do. But she did make a rather marvellous assistant to the vicar's wife, even if she did have a tendency to steal the show. Mm -hmm. There is something compelling about her presence. Yes! Well, glad to hear you say that. Oh. Because there... In the lobby of the Fleming's Mayfair, she may have thought she had something she needed to say. Yeah. And not on the stage, mind you, but the others, well, after a bit of uh, caviar and cognac, they had to drag it out of her. They had to insist, cajole, flatter in the most ludicrous and, dare I say, unseemly manner possible until... Uh, until... Oh, no, stop! No, I mean, tell me more! I simply must hear the rest. Oh, very well, then, let it be on your head. Your ears? Oh! Oh, no, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, no, oh, this is such a shock. This is so astonishing, I can hardly believe. Who else knows? Wouldn't be for me to say, would it? Would not be discreet no, at all. Oh, no, so right. Yes, my dear. Such things should never leave the sacred bosom of a... No, no, deeper. Such things should not leave the very heart of a... No, no, deeper still. Such things should not leave the very marrow of our best society. Yes, couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> Did she really mean it? Or should we be blaming the others for trying to get to the bottom of things they don't to be on top of? If you know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. We're going to take the bull by the horns then? We're ready to lead the charge? I mean, what are we going to do? I think that you and I should meet in a few days' time at Fordham and Mason's in Camden. But you, you were going away, weren't you? To bath, to take the water? Oh, yes, but that was before. I mean, now that I know what I know, everything <laughs> will just have to wait. But can you tell me, who was the source of all of this information? Well, I really shouldn't, but it will only serve him right. It was Edgar. Edgar? He didn't say a word. Could it be that he really cares for me, <laughs> after all? Wouldn't know about that, George. But you never know. <laughs> Most likely Janet has something to do with this. <laughs> but I must find out more. Will you promise me that you won't tell Edgar? What? That I told you what Amelia said or that you said he might care about you after all? Neither. About the Earl of Grey tea here in Kensington. You know how he gets about these things. He might rush right over and tell the Queen. <laughs> And a raspberry knuckle. And a garçon. Make sure it is not a blueberry knuckle the last time. It was very upsetting. And I think you know it's not good to get me upset. People ask me, Amelia, who are you really? To which I can only modestly reply, it is not for me to say. It is true that lately I've taken to going out in disguise, but this incognito phase of my life has not been entered politely. That's good. And I boast myself when I'm something else. For who can be truly honest when confronted with the truth of that law? I take a step back and look objectively with a parapet in the mind. Then you can see both the good and ill without fence. Knowing that. The storerooms of multiplicity can withstand any siege of pettiness. 
my name and the digits and footsteps and small little fences of your being. Because there, at your core, you shall be safe. George. Janet. How nice to see you again. Mm, yes, I am sure that it is. You invited me, remember? Not like I forced you to come. Nobody forces me to do anything. You, of all people, should be aware of that. Yes, you make your own decisions, no matter how you advise. Especially if they should put you in a bad light, eh? Perhaps that you could enlighten me. Meg, how interesting. You know I'd do anything I could to help. Would you? Mm -hmm. Why? We have hardly been close these many years. Do you think that I am so lacking in pity that I would turn my back on a poor, unfortunate soul, no matter how inadequate their capacity to deal with the world? Well, since you put things that way, maybe this was not such a good idea. But then they say necessity makes for some strange tea partners. Yes, I suppose they do. pronounced sizeage. Oh, well, you never get it right. Well, you always get it wrong. I am a writer, remember? I work with words, while you are not oh, I am a historian. I work with facts in the past. You just read stuff up. Do not. Do too. Now, why are we having the same <laughs> argument again? <laughs> oh. Oh. Damn that Amelia. I mean, you know Amelia. Yes, I'm afraid I do. But what does this have to do with her? Well, that is what I was hoping to ascertain from you. But I have no idea of what you're talking about. Oh, I think that you do. Oh, are you calling me a liar? I have called, and I consider you worse. Yes. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> and now it seems you need me. How very sad and unfortunate for you. But if you really don't know, then I suppose I have no choice but to tell you. What then, old friend? Oh, how odd that phrase sounds coming from you. But uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, I am absolutely godsmacked! Just absolutely! Tell me more. in the first place. Oh, perhaps he was under the weather. Oh, that's complete nonsense. He is as fit as a second-hand fiddle. Mm, yes, well, we do wonder who played him first. <laughs> oh, here comes Margaret. Do you think we should tell her? I don't know. But yes, why ever not? Let's! <laughs> why ever not what? Janet, George, this is a rather surprise to see us both together. No need to be chronic. My name is no, oh, I'm certain that Margaret didn't mean anything by what she said. Well, Amelia thinks she never means anything by anything she says. Mm. Amelia, what are you talking about? Oh, don't play boy with us. We know which way the wind is blowing. We know what is what. Oh, but do you know who is who, or should be, no matter what? We know better than that. <laughs> we know what Amelia said. I mean, you know Amelia. I'm afraid I do, but uh, how could you both know what I don't seem to know even though I don't know what it is I am not knowing? Oh, no, it's easy. Edgar told us, well, he told George and George told me. So that the two of you weren't talking at all. Oh, we decided to make an exception. <gasps> Would you like to hear what Amelia said? Oh, if Edgar told you and didn't see fit to 
Tell me, then I don't think I want to know. On the other hand, yes, it <laughs> would serve him right. Well, go ahead. Not too late. For us to still be friends. 
Okay. <laughs> Too bad the same can't be applied to me and all of us as well. No, I rather thought the jury was still out on that one. Yes, but we shall see. We don't even know for sure what she said yet. Oh, I have a very good idea of what she said, thank you very much. You do? Who told you? It wasn't me. Me neither. Uh, your efforts to protect me, dear Echo, were for naught. Because... Well, because, I don't know if I have her words exactly, but Amelia, she said, well, you know Amelia. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Amelia. Amelia! I have been. Right here all along, actually. I never could really leave you. And now you all want to know what I said that night to the Spaniards in. of turning the trivial into art. Uh -huh. Isn't that what they tried to tell you during the filming of the series? Well, there's always a good better. Well, wasn't that the point of it all in the first place? I mean, they are. Well, in a way, I suppose so, but... Well, that's what we thought you were going to tell us, Margaret. Why would you think that? Because you promised Mary that should anything happen to endanger my standing in our your circle, you would warn Mary so that I could defend myself. Is that what I said? Because I don't think that's what I meant at all. Well, what did you mean then? I meant that if you were to lose your place in this circle, you could be part of mine. Forever. Because I have loved you forever, you astonishingly foolish man. What? Uh, I said, what? Ask them! Ask them all! Amelia? Well, I'm... Yeah. Why are you asking her? But it's true, despite all my best efforts for the contrary. Yes, rather. I must say, I knew it too. Well, who could not with two eyes in their heads? But then they say, love is blind. Uh, but that is not what that means. Uh, the person who falls in love may be blind, but the object of that love doesn't need to be a complete nincompoop as well. <laughs> But what if the person doesn't realize that they are loved? Well, then it may actually apply after all. Yeah, I still can't believe it. Margaret, this is how you really feel. Yes, you effusively ignorant center to my life. It is. Margaret. Edgar? Marjorie. Eddie? Meg. Ed. No, 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 no. no. No, I actually don't like the name Ed. No, neither do I. But it doesn't matter. Not in the slightest. Oh, call me what you will, I will still be yours. And I yours forever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, Amelia, I thought I heard you say that Margaret and I despised each other. Did you know the truth all along? Well, I was mostly certain, but not absolutely. <laughs> Why not just tell us the truth instead of creating all this confusion? Yes, you are an actor. 
Plotting is not your strong point. Well, how do you know she wasn't plotting against us all along? Well, I can't say blame you for being my angry. I did create a rather coming trap, if I do say so myself, and you all fell into it. But when I tell you why I said what I said, you will thank me for having said it. No! no. Yes! This was a fiasco, this miniature imbroglio, this tempest in a fort in the mason teapot. Oh, again, I returned to the storied aisle and started to hear all your stories. And then I realized I simply had to do something. What? Mend our fences, put things right, and show things were on the up and up. Yes, the only I to help you to reach the right conclusions. You make it sound like one of George's mysteries. The detective getting everyone in the room to figure out who did it and why. Actually, I never much fancied that motif. Margaret asked me to use that for episode nine. But only as an ironic comment on the form. Which nobody understood. But this is nine. Isn't that the one where the vicar's wife finds a dead body in the bathtub? No, no. Episode nine is the one where the vicar's wife discovers that her best friend's husband is actually a jewel thief. And has been living in the countryside for years, drinking only of the very wine and running a sandwich shop. <laughs> and you loved it in the end, even if you wouldn't admit it. Did I? Can't say that I remember that. You know, we are forgetting why we are all here. Amelia. And this isn't a murder mystery. We all know that Clarissa Martin died of a coronary while jumping on the heath. <laughs> and there was no murder at the tea shop, was there, Delilah? <laughs> well, this is your show, Amy. <laughs> why is she the only one that gets to call me that? Because, in my mind, she loved the real because of But <laughs> when Clarissa Martin left us, uh, Rest her soul. Delilah was not the slightest bit interested in carrying on the role. No. I didn't want to pretend to be there. I wanted to be there for real. Oh, no, unlike Amelia, who loves to be anyone but herself. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, my dear Janet, that you are the one who needs to take a cold, hard look at yourself. Want to know who done it? It was. It was. All of you! What? You mean like in Murder on the Orient Express? Indeed. If you can show me to your faces, you're as guilty as sin. But that was a story of revenge. Yes, what were our motives then? Oh, frustration, unrequited love, petty misunderstandings, sheer stubbornness, the usual round of common human failings take your pick. I hate to admit it, Amelia, but your plan seems to have worked. How? By slandering us. She couldn't be a part of something that no longer existed, so she had to get us all together? You selfish little git! Still, if you hadn't done it, Amelia, Edgar would never in a million years have realized that I love him. And Janet and I would never have made up over our silly disagreement. Exactly. And George would never, and Edgar never would have realized that George loves him too. No, 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 no. Oh my god. <laughs> Do you, Whoops. old boy? <laughs> yes, old friend, I confess. Very much so. I always have. I never knew since I've been down the line. <sighs> Triple A, actually. Wait, what? Is that <laughs> so? <laughs> you too, Janet. Who would have thought it? Not much you did know, I'm afraid, old chum, but never mind. And you all knew this too? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. yes. <laughs> there we are. I must admit that this is more a story of making amends than of revenge, but I'm afraid that you are guilty too of doing the wrong thing for the right reason. But then that means that you, Delilah Murchison, standing there so demurely, have known about all of this all along. Now, why didn't you tell any of us? Oh, well, you all had to make these discoveries for yourselves. Otherwise, you would have never believed them. Mm. So if I hadn't mispronounced that word... You know, actually, we both mispronounced it. Yes, you did, but... Syzygy does not just mean eclipse. It doesn't. No, it's also a magical form of poetry. Uh, two very feet of rhythm, or more appropriately in, in your case, a supreme pair of opposites, bonded together by your differences, which in the end are rather the same. And, and if we had all just been honest about our shared needs, none of this would have Turned out the way it did. Quite right. You did need someone to set you straight. 
But in doing so, Amelia just set herself off in the wrong direction. Like someone hesitating at the crossroads who takes the wrong fork for dessert and ends up not knowing which one is up on the hot air balloon of life. <laughs> Somewhat <laughs> like that, yes. But Amelia, you don't always have to pretend to be someone that you're not because we truly love you for who you are now. Really? Yes. Do we? Uh, I'm quite sure. Well, what the hell? Why not? <laughs> well, we may all get there eventually. Yes, well, knowing what you did was out of love. You did do it out of love, didn't you? Seeing all those horrible, hateful things in a pub full of strangers. <laughs> Of course, one must really, really care to see such beautiful things. Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm almost speechless. I don't know what to say. Good, keep it that way. <laughs> but no one can set the world right on their own. You might have asked for help. Perhaps you thought too much and too little of us and of yourself. Did you, Amelia? Perhaps a little. So, next time? Oh, must there really be a next time? I prefer not to, thank you all very much. Anything worth keeping must be fought for, again and again! I'm afraid that Delilah is correct. We can't stand still when the stakes are high. We stand on ceremony when others can't stand the thing we stand for. So, Amelia, stay with us a while and let us get to know you at last. Really? Do you all mean it? Would you like to play cards? Well, no. I think I'm really sorry. I, I really should take off this makeup. I feel like I haven't seen my own face and what it feels like forever. But for the time, I'll be able to move. Soon. Yes, soon. Goodbye, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she going now? Oh, perhaps to rest after her good job done. God help us all. I don't think she was being sincere. Mm, that may take a bit of cogitation if I have any brain cells left out of this week. Oh, you'd better be in your right mind. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. That's mm. the first. Mm. Here is Margaret, best we do leave. My hockey meter will be up in a bit. <laughs> Edgar, <laughs> you really are a romantic after all. <laughs> oh, that's bloody time. Now, who would like to go for a fight? Perhaps two or three? You know, I have this new scenario I was willing to try out. Oh, what say is to that, baby? I have a little bit of old English philology I'd love to discuss with oh, you. Oh, what is the word? Well, I'll tell you if you tell me everything you know about Edwardian circus tents. Early Edwardian, wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> Where are they off to in such a hurry? No doubt that Edgar and Margaret are off for a marriage license, and George and Janet need to consult the unabridged Oxford English Dictionary at the Red Lion. <laughs> oh, they always keep a good old OED in the back for just such occasions. Can't count on Amelia every time, can we? No. Well, that just leaves you and me, Mrs. M. Too few for a game of bridge, and you're far too smart to play the dummy. Sometimes best to play the dummy. How about a few hands of rum? Yes, I think that'd be rather nice. Would you like to play, sir? Sustaining your ideals. 
then, when the haze of, of time clears, you shall be changed forever. In the meantime, patience is its own reward. And if you want to plant some sun baskets, that might be good too. For what may we say, we shall lead you into light of day, albeit cloudy or foggy, through which the rays of truth shall shine triumphantly, hover bent and refracted, to show you the way. I loved watching the Vicar's wife on Channel 5. We all know Amelia. <laughs> Don't we? 